What's the point of cloud monitoring? I mean, it's the cloud. Shouldn't it monitor itself? And, well, it kind of does, but you still need to know what to look at and what's going on or else... But if you'll give me just 10 minutes, I'll make your life easier. We'll get WVD monitoring all set up. You'll learn about all the top things to keep an eye on and everything you need to know for the AZ-140 exam. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Now, the first thing we're gonna need to do to get monitoring done right is we need to change clothes. And chill out, relax, because all the hard work has been done already for you. Here's the WVD admin portal, and on the left, we have our insights. Once we set this up, which I'll show you in a minute, we'll get all of the information, dashboards, and data that you need so you can set up all of your alerts. So that's all the hard stuff already taken care of for you. Then we're gonna spend the rest of this video walking through the what the hack guide where we'll look at all the AZ-140 exam questions. And to get all this set up, we just need one Log Analytics workspace. Over here in the East US Hub resource group, I'm gonna click the plus at the top and then type in Log Analytics, select our first item and hit create. Now you just need to give your workspace a name and select your location, which I'll put in the East US region and click next. I'll take the default pricing tier and click next to add my tags. And these are the standard tags I've used throughout this course. Then just click the review and create button at the bottom. Now let's go back to our WVD admin center. And then over on the left, you wanna click on insights. Now we're gonna connect our log analytics workspace that we just created with the WVD service and then everything will be set up right away. So across the top, we've got a bunch of different filters. Go through and find your specific subscription, resource group, and host pool. And if your screen still looks like this, then it's unconfigured, and you'll have a button at the bottom that says Open Configuration Workbook. So click that. Now these workbooks, by the way, are not specific to WVD. These are actually part of the Azure Monitor, which is the cloud monitoring platform. So you'll find a whole lot of other workbooks in there for anything from VM diagnostics to storage and database stuff, and a whole lot of extra information that should help you in your monitoring. But back to WVD. We wanna select our Log Analytics workspace over there on the left, then click the button at the bottom to configure your host pool. So here we're going to be deploying an ARM template and that will be set up to do one thing, configure your diagnostic settings in your host pool to send that data to Log Analytics. And once the data is all inside Log Analytics, we'll be able to process that information and then pull all of the reports and dashboards that you saw in the beginning. So hit deploy at the bottom. And then if you scroll down, we've got a button to configure our workspace, which is the same process. Go ahead and finish that out. And if all has gone well, you should see your host pool log settings and your workspace log settings here, and everything should look true. So scroll back up to the top and then go to the session host data settings tab. Select the same workspace. That way everything related to WVD is in one place. So you can see I've got my session hosts listed over here and I've got a easy button to add them to my Log Analytics workspace. So just go ahead and click that and then hit the deploy button. And it's great that this process is so easy because you know the beach is calling. So if you scroll down a little bit more, we need to set up all of the counters and event logs that WVD needs to monitor in the Log Analytics workspace so that we can look at the correct data. And you can do all of that by clicking that little button right over there. Then hit the Apply Config button. And once that's done, scroll down once again and click the Configure Events button. Click Deploy one more time. And congratulations, WVD monitoring is completely set up. Now, what in the world do we do with it? So we're gonna spend the rest of this video talking about the things that you need for the AZ-140 exam, which also happens to be the same top concerns that you should keep an eye on. So here is the skilling guide for the AZ-140, and we are at the bottom of the sheet here, the monitoring and maintenance section. And at the very bottom here, we've got a whole section on monitoring and managing performance and health. Now, we're not gonna go through every one of these bullets in this video, but there they all are, and the details of what you need are covered over here at the What The Hack repo. Now, if you scroll down here on the main page to challenge number 10, you'll see our section on monitoring. 
And this falls right in line with the AZ140 series as well as the What The Hack challenges. And if you'll scroll down, you'll see a section here for WVD monitoring as well as cost optimization through scaling. Right underneath that is the success criteria. Completing these bullets will also fulfill the needs of the AZ140 skilling guide. So let's take a look at the first item here. We need to identify the top errors preventing users from connecting in the last 24 hours. So let's go to the Insights page, where of course we start on the overview screen. Select your appropriate subscription, resource group, and host pool, then set your time range appropriately for 24 hours. Then go right over there to the Connection Diagnostics tab, and then scroll all the way to the bottom. And notice here that the activity type is connection, and then you may or may not have any errors here. So if we look at the second item, and then the message was the SSL connection could not be established. And this was happening last week for me when I was testing some of the new WVD single sign-on stuff. So let's see if we can find who had this problem. So let's scroll up a little bit and we'll find this section for potential connectivity issues. And it has report by, and then there's different items to choose from. I'll take users and we've got Nova here. And when I click on Nova over here on the right side, the error send logon cert request. So now I know who I'm looking for and I want more information. So scroll down right to the next table where I can select Nova. And when I click on that over here on the right, and we've got a red bang here on the deployment for the RD broker. If we scroll over to the right, there's the message, send logon cert request. And so we have identified our problem user. And since now we know that there was a problem for that user with the cert login, we can go back to ADFS or the certificate authority and check the error messages there and see what's going on. Let's go back to the overview tab. And we wanna take a look at our hosts. So right here in the first table, if you go into your host pool and open that up, there are my hosts in this pool. You can see when they were last updated, their current status, if they're available or not, and whether or not they have drain mode turned on or they allow new sessions, and also what the stack version is that does all of the network connectivity on the back end, and how many user sessions they allow and how many are currently in use. So let's go over to the users tab now. Then over there on the left, you wanna type in the user's name and you can see their connections, which specific clients and the client versions that they're using. Scroll down a little more to see which apps they have used and how long they were actually connected to a particular host. And you can scroll down a little more to see even how long it took them to connect in each of those sessions. And then we have their connection activity browser like we started with at the bottom. And notice too that that breaks down for each individual client that the user was using. Then we wanna to go to the host performance tab and look at some performance metrics. So select a host and then scroll down just a little bit and you'll see the input delay by process. This can help you to understand quickly if there's a bad user experience on an application by measuring that input delay in using that application. And you can see here that paint seems to be responding slowly on my environment. So I can take some preemptive measures and jump onto that host and pull up the resource explorer and then do some performance troubleshooting. And we've got time for one more thing and that is the Azure Advisor. Now the Azure Advisor is a collection of recommendations for how to improve your environment. And you can see I've got most of my stuff already handled, but I do have quite a few recommendations in the security space. So when we click on that, we can see the list of all of them. And by the way, these security recommendations also relate to a lot of what happens in Azure Security Center. So if you solve these, you'll improve your security score over there as well. Now these are just recommendations and not necessarily something that you have to do. For example, the item over there for disk encryption. This specifically relates to using Azure Disk Encryption, which is a cloud managed way of running a BitLocker as well as on Linux, it uses DMCrypt. And Azure by default does also encrypt all disks at rest. So that may be good enough in your environment and then you don't need to follow this recommendation. And if you choose to do that, you can just click on the recommendation and at the top, you can click the exempt button. But if you do want to implement it, there's a description there of what it is and you can go under remediation steps 
And depending on what the task is and what it involves, there could even be a quick fix button that would just do the work for you. So I won't spend too much more time on that. Just go check out your Azure advisor, which is like having your own personal consultant in your own environment, helping you to improve Azure. Speaking of improving Azure, the product team would of course appreciate your feedback for how to improve the Azure Insights dashboards. And I would appreciate your feedback if you would comment down below how you think the Azure Academy could be improved. Maybe we need more beach scenes like this one. Have some fun, I don't know, whatever you guys are interested in, let me know, as well as topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Speaking of which, our AZ140 series is one more video to go, and you can find that right over here. And if you're looking for something else, you can go check out the latest video up here. And don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, like, and all the other good YouTube stuff. Thanks for joining me today, and I will catch you at the beach. I mean, in the next video. Happy learning.